previously on Dragon Ball Z. Source 64 tried to predict the Zapdos coming in, but unfortunately the better time stays in and he goes for the Ice Punch, thus taking out his Kobe Bryant. Now, against his Zapdos, Escadrill comes in and he powers up by going for the Sword Stance. The Heat Wave doesn't do very much because of the light screen, thus Escadrill is going to take it very, very well. Now, because of the power up, Escadrill is going to have to go for the Rock Slide and that will take out the Zapdos. Now, Aerophone comes out and Aerophone is going to stop stall his um, Escadrill with the Exodus. And Escadrill makes a very, very bad play here and he switches out and goes to his Latios. And unfortunately, Latios gets crippled by the Stunt Ball, thus lowering his speed. Now the Super Saiyan comes out and goes for the Mark Punch, which will take out the Excadrill. And Latios suffers the same fate as he gets taken out by the Super Saiyan's U-turn. And the last Pokemon on his team, which is the Rotom, gets hit by the close combat. And unfortunately he isn't able to hold on, and he gets knocked out. Will Source to ever get his revenge? Find out on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. Oh yes, hey guys, this is Source 64 here, and I have a rematch against Shaft. You may remember from the last match that he, I made a bad prediction, probably about, about two bad predictions, and I lost to him. So this video is going to be a um, pretty much a rematch, kind of revenge kind of thing. So yeah, let's get into it. He, I lead with a cop, my Kobe Bryant, and he leads up with his um, Kirikizan, which is a Bishop, Bishop. And um, he switches up because he's not going to want to take an earthquake, so he goes into his Ferrothorn and he doesn't do very much, so I'm going to want to switch out and I'm going to go into my Gara because I have this I have this thing that every time I go into my Garchomp and I face an Atari, I always want to do these things. One is to go for the Substitute and he's going to probably go for a non-attacking move because they don't really know what I'm going to do. Secondly, I would go for the Sword Stance, as you'll see here in a minute. So pretty much I am now at plus 2, which is good. And now that I am sub, he's forced to break my sub. So he goes for the power whip. And that will definitely break my sub, as Natray does have enough power to do such things. Now, I'm going to go for the earthquake. And it is going to get a crit, unfortunately. But then again, actually no, it's not, it's not going to get a crit. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, it does around about half. And he hits me with the power whip, which does a little bit more damage. Now here, I was going to go for the substitute, hoping that he would go, he would uh, miss, and he, luckily he does. So right now, I've got my sub, and I've got my power, and I'm going to be ready to take out anything on his team, regarding that my sub doesn't break. So I go for the earthquake, and I'm able to take it out. So right now, it's, it's looking good, I've got plus two, and I'm behind the sub. And now he goes into his freaking band ape. Ugh, I hate these things. And he goes for U-turn, which I should have predicted. And he goes out into his Nevermore, which is a Murakro. The Nevermore. I will not say n the Nevermore. Um. Anyway, um, I should have predicted. Um. Whatever. He goes for the Taunt because he thinks I'm going to go for the Substitute or Sword Stance. I know he's going to go for that, so I'm going to go for the Dragon Claw, and it doesn't take it out because of the Evolution Stone. And right now, this was probably the most annoying move he could have used on my guard job. He goes for the Confused Way and. I get confused and I'm trying to get through the confusion and I don't. So right now it's looking pretty bad and he goes to the roost which is like, ah, oh, if I need, I need to hit this, if I can't take this micro out with my guard jump then I'm going to be very annoyed. So I try to go for dragon claw and I don't, I hit myself in confusion and take myself out which is bad. So now I'm going to go into my concluder which is moving to the music surprisingly enough and he is nice enough to give me a ghost boost by going for the thunder wave. But unfortunately on this turn I get paralyzed, so I'm like, damn it! So right now, he's gonna go for the um, power fusion and he's gonna confuse my contribution. Luckily I get through the confusion and the power and I'm able to take out the stone edge. So that's great. Yeah, and here was where I got the crit, but I don't really care if it mattered or not because guts boost, whatever, and I really wanted to get out. Now I'm gonna wanna switch out and go into my Mr. T because my Mr. T can take any moves that Chandelier might try and throw at me. In my case, I was thinking um, the overheat, but he goes for the fire blast, so that's alright. Either way, I'm gonna take it very well. And if I had pursuit on the T top, that Chandelier would have definitely been knocked out at this point, but unfortunately, I don't run pursuit in fifth gen, so I'm gonna wanna substitute here because I know he's gonna wanna switch out. And he goes into his spy shop, 
Now he's forced to stay in and go for the break break to try and break my sub as I go for the focus punch. And break break would definitely break my sub. I don't really see him doing anything else apart from trying to do that so I'll go for my focus punch and that will be a 4 times super effective hit and that will easily take it out. Now he's going to go into his freaking band ape and he's going to go for the u-turn to knock me out and because of u-turn he is going to force to switch out and go into one of his pokemon because of the u-turn side effect which gives me switch initiative. Now he goes into his chandelier and I'm going to go into my Kobe Bryant because I am scarfed. I'm not really sure if he was scarfed himself, he probably wasn't. I do predict the switch going to my Zapdos either way. If I go for the earthquake that would have been dumb. But the stone niche does pretty much hit the rest of his team with super effective so I just went for it anyway and luckily it pays off and I get a crit here, doesn't really matter. And now he is going to go into his um, Infinite. I'm going to want to switch it out because I don't want my Infinite, uh, my, my Kobe Bryant to miss. So I just followed this guy off and he's going to take an ass load of recoil and um, still stones damage so that's all good. Now I'm going to go back into my, um, let's see here, yep Kobe Bryant and I'm going to want to go for the earthquake. I do ice speed him because I am going to choice scarf so that would be an easy KO. And his last Pokemon is a chandelier so I'm going to be taking that out as well. So that would be good games. That'll be 1-1 one, one at this point. Um, you probably re realise by the length of this match that this is actually a double header. You might have even realised on the title. So yeah. Now on for the second round. Um, as you see different teams. So this will pretty much be the decider. I'm going to go into my me and Xiao. And he's going to go into his Aerophone. Um, he's going to go for the stun sport to cripple my speed. This is a Scarf so this is going to be pretty bad. And Kodrondo is pretty much useless at this point, so I'm, I'm just going to go for the U-turn and do a bit of damage. I, I could have gone for the high jump kick, but I thought he'd go for the substitute, so... Now I'm going to go into my Espeon, because my Espeon is is like the only Pokemon to ward this guy thoroughly and thoroughly. And he's going to want to switch out and go into his Zapdos. I know he's going to go into Zapdos, so that's why I'm going to set up the last green right about now. So now that my team is good against special attacks I'm going to want to switch out immediately because I don't want to get paralyzed and I'm going to go into my <laughs> epic entrance there yeah um, I predicted the, the thunderbolt to get my lightning rod ability working but unfortunately he goes to the heat wave he probably predicted that I go for my Mew first because I thought he was going to go for the Discharge, no nah, not Discharge, Heat Wave, but he goes to Toxic so that's pretty bad. So right now I'm just, I'm just going to hit him directly and go for the Wild Bolt and it does around about 45%. Substrike is pretty cool and he's pretty strong if you use him correctly but his um, defences do need help hence why I use my Espeon line screen to, and Reflect to help him in situations like these. Now I do live on 5 and I'm going to go for the Wild Bolt, I'm hoping to take it out but unfortunately I don't which means he's able to lift the hit, I get knocked out by recoil and I take myself out and he's going to go for the Roost because that is the smart thing to do and that's going to get all that health back that the Wild Bolt did so pretty much my last Wild Bolt did absolutely nothing. He's, not, he's even going to get more from the Roost and the leftovers. So now I'm, I'm going to go into my Celebi which is actually a zero arc and I'm gonna go for the night burst and judging by the damage this will do it looks like it's a special defensive Zepdos and he tries to heat, heat wave me thinking I'm actually a Celebi but I'm not actually a Celebi I'm actually a I'm um, sorry about that, that was just the rock current going out there sweeping stuff. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, yeah, I played the high jump kick and I go into my um, Gyarados to intimidate and to resist it at the same time. And now my light screen is off the, and he is going to go for the Stone Age. I thought he was Scarfed but that's not the case. I do live however thanks to the intimidate and I'm able to take out with the waterfall so that's good. 
so it's right now it's, it's I'm looking pretty good right now. Taking out his Kajundo, which would have been a problem to my um, Zoro arc. And now he's gonna go into his Bandit again. He's gonna lock himself into the Flare Blitz, and that's gonna definitely take me out. He even gets a crit, but that's not even mattering at the moment because it is a useless crit. Now I'm gonna go into, into my SPM because my SPM does outspeed it, and I'm gonna go for the psychic, take him out, and get rid of that fucking band ape. So that's great that's good right there. Another threat to my Zorak that could have been really bad. Now he brings out his Chandelure. I'm thinking at this point it is Scar because he keeps coming into my Pokemon to do super effective damage. I'm gonna switch out, going to my Kojondo, my main shell to take the Shadow Ball and pretty much use him as Death Order because he's paralyzed and he's pretty much useless. Now Zorak is gonna come in and <laughs> It turns out that his chandelier wasn't actually scarfed, so that means my Zoro arc was able to sweep that one as well. And yeah, now we're up to heal, and his Espion can't do anything to me because he hasn't got any attacking moves such as Shadow Ball or Hidden Power. So that would be good games. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll get back to you guys later. Peace.